Down to Earth, brought to you in association with the Musée de l'Homme. Hello, you're watching Down to Earth with Marina Birch and Marie Dundas. This week, we're reaching new heights in the age of drones. The scale and scope of this miniature pilotless aircraft has caught many by surprise. Historically known for taking lives, their reputation could be overturned as new functions emerge as a tool to save lives. But first up, let's take a look at how far drones have come. It all started with an airplane journey back in 2014. A UNICEF worker sifting through an in-flight magazine reading about pizza delivery via drone. What if she wondered that same principle could be applied to deliver HIV care in Malawi? Well, that's exactly what's happening today, but it's just the beginning of drone healthcare in Africa. Three, two, one, lift off. This UNICEF drone is on its way to transporting HIV tests around Malawi, one of the countries most affected by the virus. A country that still has 10% of its population um, HIV positive, and that also extends to, to children and especially infants. Now for infants it's really critical if they are HIV positive, they are put on treatment straight away. The majority of them will die before their second birthday. Every year, thousands of HIV-positive mothers give birth in rural areas, and they often have to wait months before they get their first test results. The topography in Malawi is such that it's very difficult to um, transport specimen from one place to the other, and with this innovation, it's going to minimize the time it takes uh, for us to get the results. Drones are getting cheaper and easier to use, which makes them an attractive option for other African countries like Rwanda. Because of its mountainous terrain and bad roads, drones are an ideal alternative. So the government teamed up with American startup Zipline for an ambitious project, the world's first drone delivery network. It's going to be the first time that drone delivery is going to operate at a national scale. Um, and it's going to be the first time that drone delivery is actually integrated with an existing national public health supply chain. <laughs> Starting this summer, a fleet of miniature planes will be scouring the Rwandan skies. No need for pilots or airports. They'll just parachute the blood samples to the hospitals within 30 minutes. A technological feat in one of the world's poorest countries. I think it's just, we always throw if Rwanda can do it without geography, with the level of technology we are, with the structure of the health sector we have, with the need of our population, if we manage to do that, of course, every country will, will manage to do it. Rwanda wants to set an example and isn't planning on stopping there. The country will be home to the first drone port, an airport for drones, a project which should be completed by 2020. By then, the drone revolution will surely have taken off all around the African continent. He's been listed in Forbes Europe 30 under 30, and he's the founder of the open platform Drones for Good. Alec Moment's latest creation, an ambulance drone. Mairead went to meet the Belgian engineer. Alec Momon, thanks for joining us here on France Enquête. Thank you. Now, you came up with the concept when you were still a student. Can you explain to us the idea behind an ambulance drone? Where did it come from? 
So I was already doing explorations around the topic of using drones for a good purpose. And it was around that time that my neighbor actually had a heart attack. And from that, I started thinking, what if actually the ambulance could have arrived earlier and he might have survived them? So I think that's where the, the idea basically came from and, and sort of evolved from there. Well, to give everyone an idea of how an ambulance drone works, we're going to watch a short video that your team has put together. This is how an ambulance drone works in action. One one two operator, what is your emergency? It's my dad. I think he had a heart attack. Please help. He's not breathing anymore. Please stay calm. What's your name? Joanna. Good, Joanna. We've got your location. The ambulance drone is on its way. Remove his top shirt to uncover his torso. Uh, okay. Great. Can you go to the nearest exit? The ambulance drone is almost there. Okay. I'm outside. I'll be talking through the drone now, so you can put down the phone. Now please pick up the drone and bring it to your father. You're doing great. Okay, pull the green lid. Now place the pads on your father's chest. Good, I can see that the pads are properly applied. Joanna, please stay clear of your father. We'll take it from here. I've read that your idea is to uh, deliver more than just defibrillators. What could we imagine an ambulance drone could eventually bring to Europe? Yeah, so I think we're looking to expand this, for example, in, in the Alps, where after an avalanche, it often takes more than an hour for emergency responders to arrive. Um, and by that time, the bodies have already cooled down and it's very difficult to find people. But with an ambulance drone, you might create a, a heat map of the area, know already where the people are under the avalanche, and then more easily dedicate the resources to where they need to look. For example, other use cases might be um, snake poison or uh, EpiPen for people with allergies, um, things like this. It's like very light tools which can be embedded onto the drone, um, which might save lives in the first couple of minutes uh, on the scene. And just finally, drones are being earmarked for all types of solutions, many of them in healthcare. Is there an element of over-promising here? Are expectations too high? Um, I think there's always an element with new technologies that the expectations are a bit inflated. Uh, and then we sort of start hitting the obstacles as I have been in the past year. Uh, I think long term, these uh, possibilities will definitely become a reality because it's getting worse and worse. Our infrastructure is getting more and more congested. Response times are getting slower and we need new technologies to solve this. So. Short term might be a bit overpromised, but long term I do I do believe we're going to get there. Drones are continuing to cross new frontiers when it comes to emergency services. In Denmark, a partnership with the world's largest drone manufacturer is testing how the technology can be used to help with firefighting, and trials are already underway. A fire has broken out in this building in Copenhagen. Firefighters are at the scene and are getting the flames under control. Taking off. Helping them in their task is this small drone out on its first mission. Weighing a little more than one kilogram, the state-of-the-art technology provides a much-needed perspective on the situation at hand. The benefit of this technology is that you have this bird-eye view of the incident. So if I go and fly right over the fire and I look straight down with the camera, I can also see all the individuals that are close by this incident. So there's tremendous opportunities to really make quicker and faster and better decision. These drones are being tested as part of a European program together with emergency services and the world leader in drones, a Chinese company, which improved the camera's infrared vision. And we've got two kinds of camera on it. We've got a normal camera in front, 
which I can control all the way around. And in the back, I've got a thermal camera. If we switch to the thermal camera, we can see the temperature under the roof. So we will get an indication if there's hot spots uh, somewhere where we, where we couldn't see it. So it's just a tool, and if you use it right, it will help you to save lives. In the long run, these radio-controlled planes will become part of existing rescue operations, freeing firemen from one of the most dangerous aspects of the job. The big thing about drones, actually, it's about search and rescue. And what drones do is they take the search away from the search and rescue. So in, in situations uh, for first responders, they're trying to find a, a casualty, uh, often in the dark or in a, in a vast, vast area. And normally it takes a five-man team about one and a half hours to find a casualty. The drone can do it in about eight to ten minutes. We know there's a car burning, but we can't see it. Thanks to the camera's zoom, the drone can avoid getting burned by not flying too low. Here, Irish, Welsh and Danish firefighters swap stories. Sean is a drone operator in his fire station. I heard about them but never even seen one. So my first concept was I opened the box in my training and flew it then. So it's, it's really uh, zero to hero type thing. Drones aren't perfect, however. Bad weather and nighttime conditions, for example, can restrict their use. The underlying technology still needs to be upgraded for drones to become the perfect firefighter. And just when you thought drones had exhausted their life-saving possibilities, yet another use has emerged in Chile. Move over Baywatch because lifesaver drones are being tested on beaches to help distressed swimmers. The unmanned aerial vehicles are fitted with a float, camera, microphone and speaker and can reach the target individual in as quickly as 30 seconds. An important time frame because someone drowning can struggle for between 20 to 60 seconds on the surface before becoming submerged. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Don't hesitate to stay connected. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Marina. Thanks, Maraid. And see you next time here on France 24.